Hey guys, Starwatch Media here with Samantha Grant, the director of A Fragile Trust at Hamptons International Film Festival. So tell me a little bit about your film. Sure. The film is called A Fragile Trust, and it tells the story of Jason Blair, who is arguably the most infamous serial plagiarist of our time. He was a young guy who was working at the New York Times, and he basically made some really bad decisions, a lot of really bad decisions, and um, plagiarized and fabricated, you know, stole other people's work, made stuff up, and published dozens of articles that were in the New York Times, and it led to a huge implosion at the institution, the top two editors were fired, it was a huge media scandal. So you started off, you have both a degree in journalism and then uh, filmmaking, so what made you decide to, uh, you know, how did those two degrees help inform making the documentary? Um, so, just to correct the record, <laughs> um, I have a master's in journalism with a focus in documentary film. So I do not have my MFA yet, which is something I'm sort of struggling with right now. Um, but I basically, you know, I started working on this project when I was getting my Master's of Journalism um, and I was in the documentary track so I was thinking about what my thesis film would be and, you know, as part of any journalism education, uh, in, certainly in this country and much more broadly as well, you learn the story of the Jason Blair affair. Um, and as soon as I heard the story, I was instantly intrigued. And the thing that intrigued me was there's a lot of conflicting information out there. Um, there. There seemed to be reports that said one thing and reports that said another, and there did not, as far as I could tell, exist one central document that told the whole story. Um, so despite the fact that there was a lot of coverage about the event, there was not one central document. Um, and that's kind of like the gold, you know, when you find that out, you want to be the one to make that. And that's what I did. Well, you know, and when we making a film, especially on a subject that most people know about, um, there's the right and there's the wrong, which as the filmmaker, you have the power to choose how you feel about it. So how did you navigate uh, the right and the wrong of this story to create your own version of what happened? Um, when you're talking about right and wrong, do you mean like accurate and inaccurate? Um, so basically, I just relied on the accounts of other people. So, you know, as a journalist, that's what you do. You go out there, you try and gather as much information as you can, and you ultimately have to kind of take in all the information, synthesize it, and then present it back out to the public in, in your best way of understanding what happened. And that's what I did with this film. Um, I talked to every major player who was involved in the scandal. I got a lot of the original documentation. And really, I let people speak for themselves. So obviously, when you're a filmmaker, you're taking um, a documentary filmmaker especially, you're taking the words of other people and you are imposing your own editorial vision on that through the editing process. Um, but basically when there was an inconsistency, I let both sides have a say. I might um, favor one over the other, but you know, for example, when Jason Blair says, I'm sorry, I let him say that on camera. And then I let the audience decide whether he really is sorry or not. So given that you're making uh, a documentary on a touchy subject, uh, on a hot subject, what were some of the challenge ch challenges? I mean, you said that most everyone talked about it. Was there someone that wouldn't interview with you, a document that you wanted to get that you couldn't? Both of those things. Um, that, that There were a couple of people who were just flatly would not come around and would not talk to me. Um, thank goodness they weren't essential. They weren't like central figures. They were more peripheral people who, it would have been fine to have them in the film, but it was certainly not a deal breaker that they were not in the film. And there was one document that I really wanted to get a hold of and I couldn't get it. And that actually um, was an interesting challenge because in many other documentaries and many other directors perhaps would have made the choice to just recreate the document. Like, I know exactly what was in the document. I know what it said. It was one memo written by an editor called named Jonathan Landman. And it said, we must stop Jason from writing for the Times, period, right now, exclamation point. That's the whole memo. And I could not get a hold of that memo. So I could have just typed that line out on a piece of paper. And in fact, I did that. And I filmed it. And it looked amazing. 
But ultimately, I decided I couldn't keep it in the film because it wasn't the actual document and that that was not an accurate representation of the truth. Every document you see in the film is the actual document. Mm -hmm. Every location, to the best of our ability, is the actual location where things happened. Mm -hmm. um, there were a couple of places where we couldn't do that, but I felt that it didn't affect the truth of the scene, and so it wasn't a problem. But with documentation specifically, I felt like it needed to be bulletproof. Well, and I think filmmakers and audiences alike can respect that, that they are given an accurate piece of filmmaking that they can take from it what they will. Um, so how has reception been? Have you guys screened yet at Hamptons? How does it feel to be here? Um, so we've only had two public screenings so far. Um, we had our world premiere at Sheffield Doc Fest in the UK in June, and we had two sold out super successful screenings. It was awesome. And the thing that was so great about that was I was able to talk about the film. <laughs> like I've been working on this for so long and the whole point is to engage people in these kinds of conversations and to bring it to a broader audience and get the audience engaged in conversations around issues of media literacy, media ethics, the role of the press, you know, can we trust the media? All of these issues that I think are so important to talk about, um, I can now start talking about them. And as far as being here at the Hamptons, you know, it's, it's awesome. Um, I grew up coming out here as a kid, and you know, the first place I ever put my feet in the ocean was at East Hampton, Main Beach. I got engaged at East Hampton, Main Beach. So it's a really special place for me. And honestly, when I was a child, I would never have dreamed that I would have a film at the Hamptons Film Festival. It just didn't seem like something that would happen. Um, so it's really, it feels right to be having my North American premiere for the film here. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Thank